uh, go to, to the second speaker of today. That will be uh, Fernando Al Albaracin. Uh, that's uh, will tell us about uh, active and tunable metamaterials for HPM antennas. Thank you very much, Dr. Yanini, for your introduction. Hello, everyone, and thank you for inviting me. My name is Fernando Albaracin. I'm working uh, with the Directed Energy Research Center here in the T Technology Innovation Institute. Um, I just put three names in this in the title of this presentation, but uh, I want to present to you the work of a team. Uh, a lot of people are involved in the fabrication, designing, and discussions of this uh, uh, of the all the systems I'm going to present to you today. My talk is entitled "The Active and Tunable Metamaterials for HPM Antennas or High Power Electromagnetic Antennas." And um, the outline, yeah. The outline of my talk uh, is composed of these three points. First, uh, a brief introduction of resonant and broadband metamaterials uh, applied for antennas and as a general view. And then a metamaterial inspired radiators for HPM applications. And finally, I will show to you very quickly uh, some of the current projects uh, we have in Dirk involving this type of uh, metamaterial inspired uh, radiators and structures. Well, first, um, I think the first picture that comes to our mind when we talk about metamaterials in the microwave and radio frequency regime uh, is this picture of the split ring resonators and the wire resonators uh, proposed uh, by Professor Smith and Pendry many years ago uh, uh, that in a try to implement the, the views from Professor Veselago decades ago. Uh, and I can say from here that this is the basis of uh, the metamaterial in the microwave regime uh, applied to my, uh, at least to antennas and what I'm going to talk to you today. We can implement artificial uh, materials using this very simple and other simple structure easy to fabricate with, uh, for example, negative uh, epsilon or negative uh, mu, uh, in which in this type of medium we cannot have uh, propagation, but Still, we can uh, take advantage of, for example, filtering properties. The double negative materials with epsilon and mu uh, lower than zero can be engineered with a combination of these two um, simple structures. Uh, the main characteristic of this type of uh, left-handed or, or double neg negative materials is the antiparallel uh, um, nature or between the phase velocity and the group velocity. Uh, and of course, the typical uh, uh, double positive material is in which the paddle, the frequency, sorry, the phase velocity and the group velocity are paddled. Well, very briefly, this is a very typical uh, application of this type of left handed materials in which, as I said before, we have a constant uh, propagation constant that is negative and is uh, inversely related to frequency. And we can implement this type of uh, structure. Uh, by means of what is called the mushroom uh, inclusion. So this is a patch antenna uh, partially fulfilled filled with this type of metamaterial uh, units that they are passive. And the uh, underlying idea is just to add it or uh, to implement a counter intuitive transmission line in which we have a capacitive in the, in the series connection and, and inductor in the, in the shunt connection. This inductor is made with the bias, the bias and the capacitive the capacitance is implemented with the coupling with the, the, within, within the units. But the beauty of this design, called the composite right hand, left handed uh, uh, transmission line, is that we can uh, add new frequencies, add uh, new uh, resonances at arbitrary frequencies. For example, and this is the, um, and, uh, sorry, this curve you can see the dispersion diagram in which we can see that uh, different uh, frequencies can be excited in different modes. So with modes, I refer to uh, radiation uh, patterns that can be controlled depending on only on the geometry of this. Of course, we can, uh, this type of, uh, of applications or these uh, new bands that we add using this material based structure uh, lack of uh, wideband behavior, so they are very narrow, band, but still are useful because we can uh, talk about efficiencies higher than seven or se 60 or 70 percent. Another very uh, trending topic or interesting 
application of metamaterial structures and antennas is the broadband impedance matching of electrically small antennas. What is an small antenna? Uh, it's an antenna that is uh, uh, small in size, uh, whose size is small uh, uh, related to the wavelength that is driving the antenna. So when the, this uh, antenna, the size of the antenna is below the K times A is below 0.5, in which K is the wave number. Uh, this is two pi divided by the wavelength driving the antenna. When this uh, condition is met, uh, we can talk about ESA. This is just a convention. Other authors talk about K times A below one. But what is uh, a fact is that uh, the, as the antenna is small compared to the frequency, the quality factor of the antenna, so the ratio between the reactance and the resistance is higher. So the higher the, the quality factor of my antenna, the more difficult it is for me to match the antenna over wider widebands as according to the body final limit. So in the classical impedance matching of the electrical small antennas, we can use a positive or a lumped element, in this case is an inductor, to cancel out the reactance of, of the antenna itself. This is the uh, circuit, very simple circuit uh, model of a small monopole. So these capacitors can be canceled out by the simple series connection of an inductor, but just at a single or a very narrow band. So by means of a type of broadband metamaterials called non-foster matching network, non-foster because this type of circuit has a negative slope in the reactance as the frequency increases, I can cancel out the, uh, ideally, at all the frequencies, the reactance from my antenna. So there are a special, uh, some uh, type of the circuits to implement this type of non-foster uh, networks that are called the negative impedance uh, converters in which I can uh, see in one port the negative version of the, of the impedance connected to the load. So the idea is just to, this is just one of the topologies, uh, inverting in this case the voltage using this uh, transistor, which are positive feedback connected to the other one. And I can add uh, 180 degrees of uh, out of phase between voltage and current, and I can see artificially the negative version of the uh, impedance load in my neck. Of course, this leads, this positive feedback leads to uh, instability. This is one of the, the main drawbacks of this type of circuits. Well, this is just an example, part of my work in my predoctoral um, studies. So this is a electrical, this is a, a loop antenna that is electrically small for frequencies below 500 megahertz. Uh, and we added a, here a, a NIG, a negative impedance converter. So as you can see in this slotted line, the S11 parameter of the unloaded antenna, which of course it only works at the resonant uh, band, uh, natural resonance of the, of the structure, but we can add uh, a new one, artificial band. So this is good, good news from the point of view of impedance matching, but what is the drawback? We have to pay a uh, important price for this uh, nice impedance matching. The price is we cannot use this type of antennas in transmission because uh, the highly nonlinear uh, nature of this non foster circuit leads to instabilities and uh, the circuit simply stop working. As we can see here, this is a work from Professor Steven Pieper. Uh, this is uh, as we increase the power transmitting in this antenna, we stop uh, matching uh, the antenna itself. And also we are adding instabilities that leads to destroying in the non foster circuit. Well, these are just uh, so far the most typical application or application, of course, are, uh, are have been published uh, in, in typical application of uh, uh, resonance and broadband uh, metamaterials. Now I want to, to share to you some uh, new trending that we are working uh, at in, in DERC, which is the metamaterial inspired radiators used uh, for HPM applications. First, let me introduce uh, briefly about what is the EMI test and environment for EMC community uh, test of susceptibility of devices on their harsh uh, electromagnetic or intense electromagnetic uh, waves is of interest. Also, it is the hardening of infrastructures. Okay, so uh, the EMI environment is the classification of the this type of uh, radiation, electromagnetic radiation, according to the band ratio. The band ratio of the 
amplitude spectrum of the radiated waveform. So for band radius uh, below one, uh, one percent of one is the, the hypoband or narrow band is the classification of this type of radiators. Uh, if the band radius for band radius between one and three, we are talking about mesoband uh, between three and 10, subhyperband and greater than 10, hyperband. This is a very well known uh, uh, figure of uh, the uh, intentional electromagnetic environment classification. So for us, uh, we are talking about ultra wideband. Uh, HPM uh, radiators or narrow band or mesobands uh, for frequency higher than 300 megahertz, so in the UHF. Well, what is a metamaterial inspired antenna? So as I claimed before, there, is a, there are a lot of uh, drawbacks uh, when we are dealing with metamaterials embedded into, into the antennas itself. And if we are intending to go up in power, so we will have problems uh, of flashing and uh, flashing over a breakdown in the antenna itself. So to avoid that, uh, some alternatives we can select, but it's still thinking of uh, metamaterial, so material beyond the, the nature of physics. This is uh, four examples proposed by Professor Siolkowski and his team. These are uh, type of antennas are called the easy antennas, easy because they are easy to fabricate. The the radiating element is very simple. It is or um, a uh, loop or just a monopole loaded with near field parasitic. Uh, the near field parasitic adds a uh, new frequency bands, and uh, these new frequency bands lower in uh, lower as compared to so the, the antenna is electrically small because the size is small as compared with wavelength. We can still connect high power or high voltage sources. This is an example of a switch oscillator connected to a, an EC antenna working in at five um, megahertz. So we can radiate in this case uh, up to almost one kilovolts per meter reduced to one meter using a very small antenna with a Ka below 0 0.5. Well, so let me introduce quickly what is a switch oscillator. Switch oscillator is a mesoband uh, source uh, that consists of a low impedance uh, transmission line that is load and uh, decoupled by the, by, uh, the, the coupled DC high voltage source and uh, is uh, terminated in a high impedance uh, load in this case and typically is an antenna and on the other end it has an spark gap the spark gap is uh, self-triggered and then the the multiple bouncing the multiple reflections uh, build up a voltage uh, signal like this and we can radiate this voltage using the attuned antenna into the space this is part of the work made by Professor Vega. And we already have in Dirk uh, fabricated and tested uh, a, a couple of these type of radiators, uh, sorry, of uh, high uh, HPM sources. Well, uh, changing a little bit the, the nature of the antenna, this type of radiator can also be uh, integrated with another very well-known uh, antenna using HPM applications. It is called the impulse radiating antenna, the IRA, which is basically a transmission line supporting a TEM, trans transversal electromagnetic wave, a spherical wave, that illuminates or la launch a very uh, fast uh, um, step-like uh, step signal into a parabolic reflector, and then it radiates backwards up uh, at the main poles called the plane wave, plane wavefront. So this is an ultra wide band antenna with a band ratio higher than 10, but still we can use this antenna and we can, this is for example, the matrix proposed by Professor Baum and Dr. Giri many years ago. Uh, so in this case, the challenge is how big or how, uh, how big we can allow myself to be my radiator. So coming back to metamaterial inspired structures, we are proposing, and this is a new concept of integrating this switch oscillator to a flat type of, radi uh, of uh, uh, reflector. In this case, this flat type is a reflector ray. In that reflector ray, we have to compensate, this is the basis, to compensate the time, uh, the, the, the time travel difference between the central point of the reflector ray, this is a side view, by adding some uh, unit cells that con uh, uh, to which I can control the, the angle, the phase of the reflected signal. So these unit cells can be selected among a very wide variety, conventional unit cells, canonical, patches, patches with uh, transmission line, uh, or a combination, for example, an Egyptian AIDS. 
This is just a monopole like or dipole like uh, unit cell. So we can design this simulating the structure as a, as a frequency selective surface, as an infinite uh, periodic surface, and can extract the phase progression. According to this, according to the size of this uh, unit cell, I can extract this phase that uh, my signal uh, uh, illuminating the reflector right is gonna is, is gonna suffer, and then I can collimate the radiation from the source, and finally implement the intended plane wave from it. So this is the concept of a mesoband uh, uh, source integrated with a uh, reflector right based on this type of unit cell. Well, this is just a simulation to compare what happens in terms of uh, the directivity of a uh, reflector right with one meter square meter uh, area against a one meter diameter parabolic reflector, commercial one. So we have a lower, a little bit slightly lower uh, directivity, but uh, efficiency can be kept uh, high because we can control the type of, the, of material we are using in the in the reflector right. On the other, on the other hand, we can manage to to make a easy to fabricate reflector right lightweight. Uh, on the contrary, on the for the reflect parabolic reflector, which are expensive and not easy to to find in the market, etc. This is just a simulation of the type of uh, of signals. This is the spectra of the radiated field, and this is uh, the the radiated field reduced to one meter of the previous example. We can reach 10 kilovolts per meter at one meter using uh, 433 megahertz uh, switch oscillator we already built. This is another example of a modified, modified uh, HPM radiator. In this case, we are adding a frequency selective surfaces, surface uh, at the passband nature to modify the frequency, uh, yeah, the frequency content of uh, ultra wideband pulse radiated from an impulse radiating antenna. So this is a sketch of the, this type of radiator. This is inspired in the hardening of a structure. So we, we turn the, the, the problem around, so we are thinking in how to uh, modify this ultra wideband pulse electric field uh, into a dampled sinusoid, damp sinusoidal like to, for example, conduct a, a susceptibility of a specific equipment at different uh, frequencies. So it's a matter of only changing the frequency selective surfaces, but we can still use the ultra wideband HPM. Uh, radiator, which is expensive, but if not easy to fabricate on the other hand, the frequency selective surface is slightly easier to fabricate. So this is the baseline idea. We select this type of resonator, as you might remind, as you might recall, this is the, uh, the split ring resonator, the, the complementary. So this one, uh, this structure simulated as an infinite surface, uh, behaves as a passband filter. So we can use this, um, this property to modify uh, the 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 ultra wideband signal from the ADA, the impulse radiating antenna. But we added some tunability. We are thinking in adding a PSO electric material, PSO electric actuator to separate this configuration. This is not the edge coupled. This is the 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 broadside coupled. But still, we can have a, a frequency agile, frequency selective surfaces by only changing the separation between the two phases, and still we can. See, uh, this is just the analysis, analytical way of uh, how uh, can I extract the final, uh, the obtained radiated electric field, knowing the analytical radiated field or the measured one or the simulated one from the, the EDA impulse radiating antenna and the, trans the, the uh, transfer function analytical from the, uh, the simulated FSS. So this is just a matter of applying the change parameter uh, principle and we can analytically obtain obtain this type of this is the spectra of the intensity of the radiated electric field that is filtered after the the ultra wideband signal passes through my FSS. This is just one of the uh, uh, configurations we have proposed. We have proposed and recently we published a paper in the class of uh, of sciences a paper uh, proposing different uh, configurations and. Uh, with uh, concentric uh, several uh, using concentric several uh, complementary spring ring resonators, we can increase the uh, quality factor of each one of these resonators. This is just to to give you a glimpse of uh, of the work in this. Uh, well, the next work I want to do to share to you is the microwave pulse compressor. Uh, this is the typical 
the conventional we are working with. We are working the, here. We are dealing with a uh, resonance cavity. This resonance cavity is made in waveguide, a hollow waveguide, rectangular waveguide. So uh, by means of uh, this iris here, which places a very low uh, uh, impedance uh, transition between the source, I have to connect a constant uh, wave mid power source in here. I can build up a high voltage standing wave ratio in this cavity using this T. And then once I, I have built up uh, this high uh, standing wave, I can disturb using a spark gap and I can uh, um, uh, un unload or I can radiate or you know or dissipate this energy, compressed energy into, uh, um, in this case, an output loader or an antenna. So this is the basic principle. Uh, this is a simulation of how this built up in the in the voltage inside, in this case, the electric field, sorry, in a probe may, uh, placed inside the cavity is, is done alongside the time. So depending on the, 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 the switch I put in here, we can control the pulse repetition frequency. But the metamaterial inspired uh, comes in the, in the way of uh, this type of, I'm sorry, I forgot to say, this type of structure needs to be uh, big enough, long enough in terms of the guided wavelength to obtain an important cavity gain. Cavity gain is the ratio of the maxima in the electric field compared to the input from the constant wave source. So, well, the metamaterial inspired structure, structure comes in the way of this um, the periodic uh, a structure called the, the degenerate band, band edge um, uh, modes. So if we now uh, think in the microwave pulse compressors as uh, uh, consecutive unit cells connected that, and each one of these unit cells can withstand this degenerate band edge, we can not only compress in time uh, the, the built up uh, standing wave as in the conventional waveguide approach, but also we can compress in space. So imagine that we can feed my cavity from the center and imagine that with this uh, band, uh, sorry, the generate the DBE modes, uh, I can uh, feed as low wave. So I forgot to say that DBE mode, uh, the beauty of these modes exciting these, uh, these cavities are that the group velocity in there in them uh, is almost zero. So that is with, this is these are called a slow wave structure. So I can um, I can compress also in space. So finally, I can the, the the baseline of this approach is to make a high power in the order of gigawatts of sorry of megawatts uh, microwave pulse compressor and also a compact design using this type of degenerate band edge applied applied the uh, with waveguides. So these are two examples of how can we make these, these cells. In here, we can see that this is just a transmission line model, using transmission line model uh, to, uh, of a unit cell section. This is just one unit in the, in the, in the, compre in the complete structure. Finally, I just wanted to talk about the dual graded index uh, flat dielectric lens for hyperthermia. This is uh, an approach that we took from our first uh, 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 try to replace the, the parabolic replay, the reflector of an ETA, by means of using this uh, equal time travel time and using a flat, double phase flat concentric rings like electric lens. So we can implement different materials with uh, decreasing permittivity from the center to the edge to convert uh, a spherical wave into a plane wavefront. So in this application for hyperthermia, we are we are applying exactly, the, we are implementing the, the, the opposite. We are taking a plane wave front and we are focusing it. Focusing, uh, this is just a previous work we already published for the HIDA, but now uh, this is how we can implement this material. So this is a, a, a mix of a high yeah, permittivity tintanate of barium. We can mix it with uh, some potent, silicon potent. We can implement this high uh, permittivity material. Well, by using two different uh, lenses that we can vary in distance, we can go from a plane wave from to a more co a convergent, uh, convergent wave and then to a more convergent. And we can uh, effectively move the effective uh, focal point inside the tissue. 
So we can apply this uh, system of two different lenses, dielectric, easy to fabricate, to a hyperthermia application. This is a simulation, the most important and relevant uh, uh, results we have obtained. So here, this is a tissue, a phantom of a tissue. This is a hotspot. Uh, the, um, the power loss density has been computed in here. So by just uh, moving out the lens number two, we can move effectively the hot spot inside the phantom breast. Thank you very much. I think I'm in time and thanks for your attention. <laughs> Thank you for the really interesting talk and uh, you were almost in time, so don't worry. Uh, we have a question or maybe two and the first one is uh, well thank you for the your presentation very interesting um, if i want to use uh, this type of reflected arrays what would be the limits regarding the current and the voltage wave from the waveforms that, uh, that you can feed well this is i think this is the the most important question we have to solve now this is a, a current work uh, well of course uh, we can calculate how much uh, the average um, voltage uh, drop between two uh, consecutive unit cells. So to be on the safe side, to be we have to implement uh, unit cells with little metal because the more metal we have, the shorter the distance between them. And of course, we haven't done yet the optimization of the distance between the uh, the focal point. Oh, I mean, the, in this case, the HPM source and the reflector eye itself. So we have two degrees of freedom to solve this question. Okay, thank you. The second one is uh, for the frequency selected surface and the planar lenses in front of the antennas. The sign is based on, oh, we have another question. The design is based on infinite surface. How the size of this surface is selected for an implementation? Is there any way to have an uh, in, into account or compense for the board effects well if you prefer you can even read it that may probably is better for you no 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 I totally understood Clear. yeah okay Correct. well in the in the case of the fss of course uh, uh, it must be infinite to to obtain the the perfectly uh, filtered signal on the on the other side but uh, if you place your fss and this is a question we have been uh, working with if you place your fss too far from the radiator, in this case, the AIDA, uh, the multiple reflections will, in the end, mixed with your intended filter, uh, clean filter uh, waveform. So there is no um, specific distance. So this must be uh, an experimental work because, of course, we are dealing with high intensity uh, electric field. So we can break down because, as you see, you're seeing this is a complementary version of the SSS. The, of the of the resonant um, unit. Yeah. Okay, I see. Um, yeah, the last question is, uh, thank you for interesting talk. When you use the high impedance surface as a reflector, the high power is not a problem from the electric parts? <laughs> uh, of course, <laughs> most of that in the dielectric uh, is a problem because of the breakdown in the metal parts itself. So as, as in, but yeah, we are planning to, to put additional layers in to, on top of the metal parts to, to tackle this problem. But again, this is, it's a work, an experimental work. So, but yes, you are right, Alexandra. Yeah, the, this for sure is okay. gonna be a problem. More in the metallic part of that in the dialect. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you again for the-, for the